I thought, okay, death is probably going to be something that can be defeated in this. Hey, amen. Okay, what we're not going to do is this whole, I don't want to focus on Kijan thing. I don't, I don't know what your issue is with me, camera. Anyway, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Keys, Looks, and Books. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a special video that I wasn't planning on doing, but I got tagged for the first time uh, to do a challenge and it is the Bar and Books uh, Challenge. I was tagged by Yael's Nook. Uh, Key, aka Keys, Looks, and Books. That's me! <laughs> She's cool. She uh, was also on hiatus and she uploaded yesterday. I know. I still was watching the video. Why is she, she calling yesterday. me out? So go watch that video and then subscribe to her because she's cool. And then tell her to make this video. Yo. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this tag. Shout out to you. Go ahead and subscribe to her. I am 23, so I am old enough to drink, but I don't drink. So I don't have anything, I don't have a mocktail or anything that I could like use to make one because I, I just don't drink. Um, so all I have right here is some water. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is all I have. But I do have all of my book recommendations ready. I have all the questions written down. And yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so the first drink is an old fashioned. The book that I'm supposed to be recommending is a historical fiction. The one book that came to mind that I've recommended time and time again is Kindred by Octavia Butler. It is about a woman who gets thrown back into like times of slavery, thrown back into the deep, deep South. One of her white ancestors is actually calling her back because he keeps putting himself in danger. And she has to, in order to save her family line, she has to come back and rescue him every time he puts himself in danger. Very interesting and complicated dynamic between her and her white ancestor, but also because she is a black woman and she's existed in this time period, it's really wonky and she gets the experience that she would think that a black woman would experience during the times of, of intense slavery. So the next drink is a sidecar and I have to recommend a book with a strong supporting character. And the only thing that I could think of for some reason was An Ember in the Ashes and the side characters that I thought of were Cook and Izzy. Later in the series, I'm still in the middle of it, so no spoilers, but later in the series, I would say like the third book, A Reaper at the Gates. But the side characters that I'm thinking of are Cook and Izzy. I love Cook. I didn't like her at first in the beginning, but now she, look, she came through later in the series, okay? So I would definitely consider her and Izzy really, really strong side characters. Izzy was also, she was just a light. This is little spark of hope. I love her, she was amazing. The next drink on the list is a Manhattan and I have to recommend a book that is set in New York. The book that I didn't realize was set, was even set in New York, um, but I read it last summer and that is They Both Die at the End. Now, with the title, how could you not wanna pick that up? I thought, okay, death is probably gonna be something that can be defeated in this, hey, amen. Something that can be defeated in this text. So maybe like they both will die at the end, but maybe there's technology to bring them back or something like that. And so I just thought, you know, how are you gonna make me like this book? It was actually really, really good. It's a queer love story uh, between two boys. I don't remember how old they are. They might be in high school, but come from two completely different walks of life and they live in a society where you're gonna know the day that you are gonna die. So you basically get a call, I think it's called like death cast, like a weather cast, and they let you know like, hey, we don't know how or like what time exactly, but you're gonna die today. So go live it up, you know? Like that's basically what the call is that they get. They both end up getting the call on the same day, but they're complete strangers. And so you basically get in to see these two strangers um, fall for each other in a way, uh, kind of get melted into this friendship. It's a really sweet story. The next one is A Bloody Mary. This has to be a recommendation of a book that messed you up. To this day, I'm still recovering from reading this book and I can't get myself to read any of the author's other books because I'm scared <laughs> that I'm gonna fall into this deep sadness that I fell into when I read this book. And that is The Kite Runner. That book 
oh my goodness it's also about two young boys and their relationship to each other not a romantic one but they knew each other when they were children and were just in very very different socioeconomic backgrounds the the guilt that one of them feels after they grow up and he's reflecting on this relationship that he had with this other child when he was younger this other little boy and he realizes a lot of the mistakes that he made and how they have shaped him to be this sort of cowardly man and he doesn't want to be that. It is just so rich with family and a lot of sweet, sweet moments, but a lot of sad ones and a lot of just very real and raw moments that just shook me to my core. Mind you, I read this in like maybe 12th grade. I was definitely still in high school. I had never read anything like that. It was, um, it messed me up. So it definitely fits in this category. So the next one is an espresso martini, a book that kept you reading into the night. The book that I thought of was Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Wake up, you want to open it. And as soon as you get into bed, you're like, oh, maybe like two, three more chapters and then I'll go to bed. Legend Born was one of those books for me. I feel like I can say this confidently. I have never read a book with a black female lead and a love interest that wasn't like a white savior. I feel like that complex comes out so much. There is always a guy, there is always a man, more than likely if it's a black female lead, a white man who comes in and just kind of swoops and like saves her at the last second and it's like was this her story or his? Question mark. I haven't been surprised, genuinely surprised by a book in a long time. That book, yes, that one will have you with your eyes looking crooked at night trying to trying to make sense and you know you're tired. That's that type of book. The next drink on the list is a uh, Sazerac? I think that's how you say it. A book that left you disoriented. And the book that I thought of for this one was I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I don't, to this day, I feel like a little lopsided because what were you doing? Like what were you, what were you going for, Ian, Ian Reed? I still don't know what I was supposed to get from that book. The first half of it is a real story. I've said it many times. A girl is trying to, she's on her way to meet her boyfriend's parents. The boyfriend is like, you know, excited or whatever. They're driving a long way. By the end of the book, we don't know who's who, okay? We don't know if she is him, if they are one person, if, one of them is a spirit. I don't know if one of them is a murderer. There's so much that is not explained. So that is my um, book that left me disoriented. The next drink on the list is a Long Island iced tea. And this is a book that is doing too much. Bonus points if it works anyway. And the book that I thought of, oh my goodness, I haven't gotten to talk about this book yet. It's A Woman in the Window. I just read that recently. This book was doing too much in the sense that there was no reason. I think it was like 350 to 400 pages. There's no reason. There was no reason for it to be that many pages. When I tell you this was the most simple story and this, and normally I will DNF a book so fast like that. Okay, I would not force myself to read a book. And this book was so bad that I forced myself to finish it just so I could rant about it because I didn't want to be like, oh, this book is trash, book is trash. And then somebody's like, well, you didn't even finish it. So how do you even know? I finished it and it was trash. Now I can say it. This could have been a novella. It could have been a novella. The next drink on the list is a Negroni. So I have to recommend a book with a love triangle. I just watched Yael's video and they were talking about how a lot of the books that we say have love triangles aren't really love triangles. It's only because it means that everybody has to be interested in everybody. But a lot of the time it's just this. I guess I recommend a love roof because I don't think I know a book with a full on love triangle where like everybody's interested in in the other two people. I ended up saying A Torch Against the Night. This is the second book in the Ember and the Ashes series. And I said this one because this was the best twist on a love triangle, a roof. 
I feel like this is the best twist on one because if you know, you know, one of them has like a little secret and mm -hmm. and I feel like there's also, I don't even know if that I would consider that a love roof because Laia, Leia, Elias and Keenan. So in my head, I'm thinking about Elias, Laia and Keenan. But now I'm thinking about it, Helene was low key in there too. So I don't know what this, oh, is that like a rectangle almost? I don't know, but there's a lot going on with that love story. So I would definitely consider that a great recommendation for uh, if you're looking for something with a little bit of, a little entanglement, if you will. So the next one is A Bay Breeze. And this is a book with light and chill slash heartwarming vibes. And of course, this is the book that everybody is gonna recommend, I already know it. Yael also recommended it, House in the Cerulean Sea. The House in the Cerulean Sea is so sweet, so heartwarming, just, uh, it just makes you feel good. It's very much a feel good book, so I would definitely recommend this one. The next one is A Dark and Stormy, and this is a book that's dark and menacing. Bonus points if the setting matches. And the book that I thought of for this one, it was sort of a theme that went along with it, was Never Talk to the Gods at Night, because um, those aren't the ones you want to talk to kind of thing. That is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I think when I think about this book, it just feels really dark and it feels really sort of mysterious and just really, I see no light, basically. There is this theme about making a deal with the devil that kind of is all throughout that book. So I feel like that's why when I think about it, it's just really dark. So that's the book that I would give for this category. Okay, and the last one on the list is a martini and I'm supposed to recommend a classic. Oh, the book that came to mind when I think of a classic or what's considered a classic in the canon is To Kill a Mockingbird. I read it in ninth grade. One of the first books that I had to read for class that I actually enjoyed. And I enjoyed it because it was talking about real stuff. And I think I also enjoyed it because of my teacher. Shout out to you, Miss H. She was just really, really good at making us feel invested in the story. I think it's a unique story in that you're kind of walking in the shoes of a child as they're learning about racism and she's really learning about what it means to be a good person she's asking all these questions and she's like nine or something and so you also get this really childlike view of it and so it's really simple so when you get to see that from the perspective of a child it's really cut and dry and so there's no real complexities added to it. So those are my recommendations for the bar and books tag. Shout out to Yael for tagging me. The two people that I'm gonna tag are, I'm gonna tag Jayla from Lala Loves It and she probably won't see this, but pretty ex-bookish. I love her, I love her channel. She's so fun to watch. Those are my two tags. Hopefully they see this and get to do this tag as well. I hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. I feel seen. Okay, I feel seen. I'm because of this. <sighs> anyway, that's the end of that. What y'all doing? <laughs>